Europe already has, over the last few decades, put in place many of the policies but also incentives for people to consider their consumption footprint. The energy efficient light bulbs, the move towards LED technology, literally allows us to light up a room today um, with one tenth, one twentieth of the electricity we needed 20 years ago. So these are great illustrations of what we can do. But there are other aspects also. For instance, few people realize that over one third of all food that we grow every year on our planet is never consumed. It is either lost between farm and market or it is actually thrown away and wasted. This is both from an ethical and a consumer point of view really not very sane. And secondly, also something that we can change. The SDGs, if they are adopted this September at the New York summit, do not simply treat developed and developing countries in an equal manner. They do recognize that countries will have different priorities, different means of actually implementing, and part of the um, negotiations happening around financing for development are also recognizing that international financial support through development cooperation technology support are still part of enabling countries to make that transition. But let's take this example of fossil fuel subsidies. It is a very good illustration of how a myth can prevail. Yes, poor people cannot afford to buy expensive sources of energy. But there are much more efficient ways of achieving this because what few people realize is that when you subsidize fossil fuels in a very generic sense, and remember we still spend 600 to 700 billion dollars a year in making fossil fuels cheaper at a time when we're actually trying to decarbonize our economies because of climate change. Those subsidies, however, do not accrue in large part to the poor. In fact, in many countries, research by UNEP, by the IMF, by IISD and others have shown that 60, 70, sometimes 80 percent of those subsidies actually reach only the richest and the well-off because they are the ones who have the largest consumption of fossil fuels. So if you want to help the poor, then try not to have a fossil fuel subsidy in general have targeted measures. You can have very specific target group measures that allow access to energy at a cheaper or subsidized level to those who need it, but don't subsidize the well-off in consuming even more fossil fuels, creating more emissions. That, I think, is a good illustration of why the myth of the 20th century that only the rich can afford the environment is increasingly being shown to be a myth. Let us remember we began the journey of sustainable development goals in the aftermath of the Rio Plus 20 summit um, that essentially called upon the world to develop a set of sustainable development goals. What was fundamental to their design and to the mandate given to member states to then pursue this in the context of the General Assembly of the UN was that they should be integrated, universal and if you want to try and address the full spectrum of development issues, not just some. This was in part the lesson learned from the Millennium Development Goals that were very selective, very targeted. And notwithstanding their success in terms of trying to focus investments and attention on some fundamental issues, clearly the challenge of sustainable development in the 21st century must deliver actions in all countries and therefore I think an important fit for purpose test for the SDGs is, will it also address the consumption production patterns of industrialized countries? And secondly, is it integrated? Is it not just trading off economy versus environment or equity versus GDP growth? Our societies today are struggling in many parts of the world, north and south, on the equity and sustainability frontiers. I think the SDGs are never going to be a perfect development theory, but considering that in just over a year, the 193 plus nations, member states in the United Nations General Assembly have come up with a set of sustainable development goals on which they can agree. And secondly, that the world is now delivering also the indicators and targets to monitor their implementation. And in others, we will be negotiating and hopefully agreeing a framework for financing for development, I think could be considered a very encouraging signal.